on a cake. Uh, unfortunately, our usual host, Ivan, is not able to be here today due to the Adrian conflict. He's getting married. So that's completely understandable. Um, but uh, fortunately, I will be here to take the reins and take Ivan's spot today. And I am also joined by my uh, co-host, uh, Devin. Devin, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How about you, Abel? I'm doing good. I mean, I took a nap uh, and I got my coffee. So I'm feeling good. I'm a little bit shaky, um, but, you know, I'm all right. Uh, and I'm sure you guys have noticed we are also joined by uh, a very special guest. Uh, we have today uh, Whitecaps expert Angelo Zara. Angelo, would you mind introducing yourself to people who might not know who you are? Hey, guys, just before we start, I just want to say thanks for having me on. This is awesome. I'd like to talk some Whitecaps, but... <clears throat> Yeah, just uh, I've been a Whitecaps fan since they came into MLS since 2011. Been following it ever since then. It's always been Heartbreak City. <laughs> and especially now we're living in an era where, you know, money's kind of taking over a bit in the MLS. So it seems like Vancouver's chance to get an MLS Cup is slipping further away each year. But I'm married to the team, so I'm sticking with them till death two is apart. So, yeah, and hopefully... We get an exciting game on Sunday here. It's been a while since, you know, we've seen our teams take the pitch here. So hopefully it'll be a game with fireworks on Sunday. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I've been missing, you know, quick action for a, for a minute. Uh, we weren't left on the greatest of notes after our defeat to Tigres, which I'm sure you guys know all too well. Um, <laughs> but I'm curious, uh, what are your thoughts on your overall season so far, not just Leafs Cup, but also MLS? Uh kind of expected the season that they're having this year. Last year, they they had a playoff uh, shot until, like, decision day, and they just missed out mm. against losing against Minnesota. I feel this year is going to be the same thing. They did make some good acquisitions during the break here. They got two Canadian internationals, which is kind of huge transfers for them for their budget with Sam Adekubi and uh, uh, dropping the name here, uh, Richie Larreas from TFC. So, We'll see what the kind of difference they'll do, but uh, like looking ahead to the game against San Jose here, it's going to be must win because looking at their schedule after the game against San Jose here, they're going on the road for seven straight games. And just like San Jose, Vancouver's away record is poor and it's tough for them to get results. So it's, I think that's going to be their make or break part of the season in late August and September here. If they, can't get any results on the road, then I think their playoff chances are toast. So we'll see what happens, but they got to start, they got to get points on the road or else they're finished. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I definitely don't hope we give you those points, but uh, I do hope <laughs> that I do wish you the best of luck. I would say that uh, Vancouver is probably my favorite of the three Canadians. Uh, I think the closest, but also I just, I just like their vibe more than Toronto. Toronto feels like. And then I don't really think about Montreal, um, to be honest. I just don't think about them very much. Uh, but yeah, Devin and I were uh, discussing in preparation for this episode. We were talking about um, like how close we are in the league table, and like and like we're just above you guys, but there's not like a lot separating us. Devin, what are your thoughts on uh, the league? Yeah, table? so currently there's there's a one point difference. Our results have been almost the exact same, besides the uh, the game in hand that Vancouver has on us. I think we currently have eight wins, eight draws, and seven losses. And I think Vancouver is currently at eight wins, seven draw, or yeah, seven draws and seven losses. Um, so they do have a game in hand, but we'd have the point advantage. Um, another thing that I noticed that Angelo can probably you know uh, analyze a little bit better than us is Vancouver is really good with scoring both away and at home. And considering, you know, their home record, um, the fact that they can score more than two or three goals a game, um, it's going to be a tough matchup versus the San Jose Earthquakes, who have known, who have been known for, you know, keeping the the goal conceding numbers to a minimum. So, I, you know, Angela, I'd like to hear your, your thoughts on on the possible matchup we have this this coming weekend. Yeah, like, well, I'm someone that likes to bet on soccer too, so these are trends that I notice and. As you said, Devin, like Vancouver, they're such a high-scoring team at home. They're putting, they're finding ways to put the ball in the back of the net. And San Jose, 
on the road, they seem to struggle. I believe they only have 10 goals under in their away form and they've allowed 20, I believe, on the road. So that kind of sets up nicely for a high scoring game kind of for Vancouver. Um, and, and like I mentioned before, Vancouver's strong home record, like they've only lost two games on, on BC place there, I think. Uh, like they're teams that are more experienced playing against Vancouver. They're kind of used to the turf as like, say for the newer players there, it, you know what the new, the artificial turf throws off some players. And I think that's why Vancouver has such a home advantage too, is that artificial turf. So we'll see what happens, but it's funny if, yeah, these two teams, they're, they're neck and neck to the head and head. I believe head to head at all time games. It's like 11 wins for San Jose's 10 wins and 12 draws. So if I had to bet on this game, I would not to be a homer, but I would have to lean just Vancouver just because for a simple fact, they have such a strong home record. And San Jose, they're just struggling on the road. They're just like Vancouver. I don't know why these teams are so Jekyll and Hyde from home and road. Like, I I don't understand why. I know MLS has a huge home advantage for teams, but I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I would love to defend my Quake and say that you're wrong and no quakes are the best. No, we we are bad on the road. We we just kinda like yeah. put it up to the the our gray creators kit. That, that thing is cursed, I swear. Um mm-hmm. but yeah. Uh, <laughs> can confirm. Yeah. 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 Um so uh in preparation for this I was looking at some of the highlights of your last game. I didn't get to see the um Galaxy game, even though I believe you guys won that, correct? Um mm-hmm. So the Tigres game was, wow, what a what a match. That was a very exciting match just to watch in the highlights. I'm sure, you know, watching the full thing mm-hmm. must have been like an emotional roller coaster. Uh, you guys scored first, uh, and then Tigres, uh, Andre Pierre Gignac with a, a bicycle kick. To equalize it, wow, that was just a crazy match. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Vancouver, they seem to get burnt on set pieces. I don't know what it is. I think I don't have the stats in front of me, but it seems like I don't know, watching them like every time they give up a goal, it's from a set piece. <laughs> they just seem to, they can't defend it. And I don't know, like there's no analysis with this, but just being a Whitecaps fan, it's just always heartbreak city. Like that Tigers game, you think when they score first, it's like, okay, we got some mojo, things are going to go good. And then we just couldn't capitalize and then we lose and penalty kick. So it was just unbelievable especially after the high, after beating L.A. on the road in, in L.A., like a team that has struggled to win in L.A. and on the road. So it was just, like I said, heartbreak city. I hope they can recoup and now get ready for the stretch drive here. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I was watching some of the shootout, and I, I saw that clip. I didn't realize it was from the Vancouver game where uh, uh, Guzman was just, like, pulling the, the string out of his mouth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was being, like, a mime or whatever. That was ticking me <laughs> off, too. I wanted to punch the string. <laughs> He's to a the goal <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah, I, I saw that. I was like, that's awesome. But then, like, I really, like, you might not think that's so awesome, you know, when it happens to you. But, um and it worked, yeah. it worked, which is a crazy thing. <laughs> it, it put your, your taker off. So, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, let's talk about uh, some of the signings that you guys made. Uh, you guys, like you mentioned, you got two uh, Canadian national team players. Um, <laughs> and I'm curious, uh, how do you think those signings impact your starting 11 coming into this next match against Quake? Uh, well, for a say, Richie LaRay, he usually plays as defender and Vancouver usually plays a back three. So I wonder if they're going to play with four defenders or if he's going to play, say, in the midfield, kind of like as a wing back and just rotate back and forth and he'll jump up in the play when need be. And then when the ball's in like their end, he comes back and helps out. So I don't, I'll be curious to see if Vancouver keeps their same formation with the back three. I've never liked the back three since Vandy Sartini took over the club, I always felt like Vancouver's, that's kind of their weakness is defending and they still roll out with the back three. So I, I'm i curious, like I said, if he'll play back four, I highly doubt it. I'm sure it's Richie Larea, he'll play somewhere in the midfield. And same thing with Sam Atacubi. He'll probably play on the, on the left side. You'll see him on the left wing. He'll probably run up and down the flanks. 
both speedy players, which will be awesome for for Vancouver just because season's a grind. Everybody, I know we just had a long break, but it's wear and tear on these guys are playing extra games more than they usually do. So I'll be curious how they fit in. I don't know if they're going to start just because to integrate them into the starting 11, maybe they'll come on as subs, but we'll see. I think they'll maybe make an impact later in later in the campaign, but for now I don't see them making uh, like an immediate impact. I think they're just going to stick with what's working for now and just kind of ease them into the lineup as we go. So with that being said, what, what would you say is your starting 11 uh, for this next like if you had to build one yourself. We were starting a I prob so I don't have the lineup in front of me, but I probably just roll with the same lineup that they've been bringing out, especially Ryan Gold there. He's been the MVP for Vancouver this year, leading the team in assists, I think second in goals behind Brian White, which that's the combination that got us into the playoffs in 2021 was Brian White and Ryan Gold, the connection between them two and they seem to be finding that mojo again this year. So I think what that Vancouver's been rolling out the last few games with their starting 11, it's going to be status quo. Yeah, no, Ryan Gold is a player that we, we're we always looking out for. The Scottish Messi, uh, he, he's not fun to play against. He's very dangerous. Not just like dribbling and his awareness, but his range of passing too is very impressive. Um, but Devin... Devin, I was wondering if you could uh, build us your starting eleven uh, to keep. Go so ahead. I think a a good starting eleven for the earthquakes against Vancouver. Um, I'm going to roll with the typical four three three that we've been working with uh, instead of the the three five two. But we'll start with the the goalkeeper. I think Daniel's going to start. Although I've heard reports that uh, recently he's been using a lot of ice on his knees, so I'm a little unsure about his fitness or you know injury concerns, but. We'll start with Daniel in the back line. I'll say Trauco on the left. We'll have in the middle uh, Rodriguez. And I would say maybe Beeson. Mensa on the bench. And then as right back, it's it's a little tough between Paul Marie and Carlos Acapo. But I think Acapo stretches Marie just by a little bit. Um, in the midfield, we'll have Jackson Ewell, Carlos Grezo. And if healthy, Jamiro Montero. But I'm not sure if he if he is back yet. Abram, have you heard anything about Montero? Oh, you're muted. Okay, yeah, there's some uh, Hellcats going outside my house. Um, anyways, uh, Montero, <laughs> I haven't heard anything, but um, it was really unfortunate that you got hurt and then came back and got hurt again. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but I mean, Nico isn't a bad, you know player to to have in his stead so uh either way we look pretty good in that spot yeah nico's a great shout i i would love to have nico in the midfield although i think i think vancouver in the first half might eat nico up but towards the second half i think he'd uh he'd show his 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 shine um in terms of forwards considering we just got a couple of new acquisitions i'm gonna stick with the normal three i'm gonna stay with Cade cowell on the left jeremy abobasi in striker false nine position and of course, the one and only Christian Espinoza on right wing. Um, although I do think towards early towards the second half, we're going to see a Matthew Hoppy uh, appearance. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to that and seeing what he can bring to our table. Yeah, I hope so. And uh, I mean, if K doesn't start this match, it might be an indication because we've been getting a lot of rumors. Uh, and I mean, Devin, you and I have been talking about this. And uh, Angela, I don't know how much you follow Cade Cowell as a, a Canadian fan. Uh, he's more of like a, a U.S. you know prospect. But um, it is, we've been getting offers from Bologna, and that's very interesting. We've been wanting to to offload him and like maybe get like a good fee for him, and then send him somewhere where he could develop, and you know, we, so we can take credit for him if he does develop into something special in the future. For sure, yeah. No, I've been following him. He did well in the U twenty World Cup. Um, I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask you guys. Like, do you think he's on a move, or like, what's your percentage feeling he's going overseas? I think our hope is, you know, he's on the move to Europe. Mm -hmm. But the reality, of the situation is, I think um, it was either Leach or Lucci put into more perspective 
and that we kind of need him for a playoff push. We don't have that much depth on the left. So mm-hmm. um, our current our current request is 7.7 mil, according to reports. Wow. Um, so that's a big fee for for a player who doesn't have the numbers within the you know within MLS. He did mm-hmm. uh, fare well for the U20 World Cup and somewhat for um, the US for the Gold Cup. But you know, at the same time, I kind of agree with with after thinking about it with with our fixated fee because you know it's not it's not more of a how good he is in the world and what a normal you know what a normal fee would be for him for his talents but i think it's his importance to the club he's mm-hmm. he you know the, our management seems to seems to find him as a key importance of depth and and whatnot if we let him go for a, a small price at the current time in need right now um I think that would be a huge blow to the earthquake. So 7.7 actually does feel pretty accurate. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I do think that he is an important player. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have a lot of depth there. Uh, I think the pecking order right now, uh, if we assume Hoppy is a purely a striker, which is kind of weird, but we'll get to that later. Um, we have Buddha and Richmond, and that's our left wing, uh, which both of those players are very good players in their own right. They've been killing it for quick too but they've yet to prove themselves in MLS play. So getting rid of uh, Kate Cowell after our window is closed to make transfers, even if we get in 7.7 million, it, it's it's rough because we we want to make playoffs. Lucci promised playoffs, and you know his job's on the line if we make a huge drop and then don't end up making it uh, into the playoffs. This year. So I, I do understand both perspectives, but uh, I think in the long run, like for the, uh, like, Eventually, we want to see Cade moved on, and I think we're disappointed because this was the time. He did amazing at the U20 World Cup. He was with the national team. His uh, resume has never been better, and we as Quick fans are kind of scared that it's just going to go down um, from this point. I have a gut feeling that he's going to leave this this offseason, at least MLS offseason. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he gets that good good amount of half-season time in, in Europe somewhere, and and you know we we can find with the 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 price tag that he has i think we can find a good replacement player with that that money um hopefully domestically because i know the 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 league rules require um any income money that we we get we can transition into to gam or tam um mm-hmm. so knowing leech our gm he likes to make domestic transfers so <laughs> i'm hoping that's the case yeah Fair so enough. to pivot back to uh Cap talk because uh, we didn't have you here just to talk about Quake just as, uh, but I'm curious. Uh, <laughs> so from my perspective as someone from outside, who my only real uh, you know, view of the Caps has been through fantasy MLS. Uh, was Quake uh, Caps didn't start off great this season. They were a team where if uh you see someone facing them like Almada or a good striker, you will pick that player because they are uh, tipped to to do well. Uh, but you guys have like climbed up the table a lot, and I'm curious what you think has happened to make that change. Um, well, like I mentioned before, Vancouver's strong home play that's what's got them up, moved them up the table because they played a lot of home games. And like I alluded to before, now they're going to be going on the road, we might see Vancouver take a dip in the table there. So that, that's why I said, like this game on Sunday. I mean, it's not do or die, but it, it's a, almost a must win because they need it. And Vancouver, I think they, you know, I'm surprised the way they kind of play too, even though like they have a strong home record winning. So you guys have the U.S. Open Cup. Vancouver, they won the Canadian Championship, which is the equivalent of the U.S. Cup. So I thought that was kind of like their, maybe their peak. I didn't think they would maybe string wins after that, but they seem to keep level-headed and as long as they keep up their strong home play they're gonna have a fighting chance for the playoffs to me it's what's gonna determine their season is their role play and it's not pretty on the road when they only have one road win (laughs) and they seem just they can't keep the ball out of their net and at the start with their goalie up uh upgrade there with takaoka he was getting clean sheets left right and center and then now it seems like vancouver they seem to be conceding I think it's been 12 straight games. They haven't kept a clean sheet in MLS play. So if you're a betting person, I would take both teams to score in Vancouver Whitecap matches because they always seem to be a little bit higher scoring games. Yeah, that's 
good input. Um, for sure. So I'm curious about that. Uh, so a key player for you guys who I was, you know, scared of playing the first time was Julian Gressel. Uh, and I was really shocked that he left kind of pretty soon after arriving from, um, I'm not even sure where he mm-hmm. came from. DC United, was it? Um, he was yeah, like, DC. he is still such a great player and has such an impact on the game. So I'm curious, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, his departure? It's a big hole for Vancouver, especially we're a team that doesn't have much depth. I know we adding, you know, it's Sam Adekubi maybe takes over that role or Richie Larea, even though they're not true midfielders. But yeah, like when we got him last year, I was I was super stoked. I thought it would work out. I thought it would be an assist machine, but it, he did put up some decent numbers, but it wasn't, I think I kind of had this expectations he would be like kind of a Ryan Gold like, 1B, but it just didn't turn out that way. I think Pedro Vite in the middle, I think it's kind of took over the role. And I guess salary wise, you know, because Vancouver is not a team that can spend. So to offload that contract, I think that was more than anything for Vancouver. But yeah, I was kind of sad to see him go. I hoped it worked out, but I wish him all the best. And hopefully he just doesn't score against our teams in the end. That's all. <laughs> Uh, definitely. And uh, it's funny you mentioned Vite because that's a player that I did want to mention. Um, I actually got an uh, autographed uh, Vite card, but I don't have it with me. Oh, no way. Yeah, uh, it was pretty cool. But anyways, um, so I saw that Matthew Doyle uh, mentioned Vite as one of the best young players in the last season. And uh, how he was supposed to be like a more of a number 10 type player, but kind of like uh, proved himself in more of a... a a deeper role playing more like a, controlling the tempo of the game and he's stepped into Gressel's spot. I'm curious uh, mm-hmm. what your thoughts are on that and how accurate that assessment is. I think it's a fair assessment. He's, he's you know, kind of um, beating expectations than I thought. He's remained healthy. He's played 22 games this year. I think it was last year he had a bit of an injury bug. It was nice to see him put up, you know, he's put up four goals this year, which is more than you can really expect, especially playing like a deep lying midfielder, which is can't ask more than that. And you know what? I only had 21 years old. You know, I, he might still have some ceiling to hit, like to hit his full potential. But then in an MLS, you once you hit that potential, you're obviously going to be sold after. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, Vite, he's going to be a, he's going to play an important role for this team going forward. So hopefully, he can stay healthy because. You know, he's a key player in this team. If he goes down, I'm knocking on wood here. Like, I'm not wishing injury on anybody and on any team. But if he goes down with injury, it's going to be a big hit for Vancouver. And like I said, to repeat myself again, when they're going on the road for seven games, you need all the legs you can have and and depth. So I hope he could just remain healthy and just, you know, the way he's playing will be good enough, I hopefully, for us. Yeah, he had, he had like a banger against uh, Degas too. I just watched that. It was mm-hmm. insane, a, a volley from outside the box on his left. Um, but I'm curious, um, so the last time we faced each other, I believe it was, was it 2-1 or 1-0? I'm, I'm not sure. 2-1. Yeah. 2-1 uh, to the Earthquakes. Right. Yeah. Um, so that that was a game that was kind of too close for me because, again, like uh, I knew that uh, Caps weren't great on the road. And I I thought we were like doing really well. I thought uh, Espinosa, the player that like was on fire at the time. So I was kind of disappointed to only get out of there with one point uh, lead. But um, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on like what you guys have to do this time to uh, change the result, turn it around? Oh, uh, well, like I said, Vancouver, their, their set piece defending is horrible. So try to avoid, you know, those fouls in, in their end and around the box or whatever, or else they're going to get burnt. Corner kicks, try to eliminate those for San Jose because if San Jose, if they get a lot of chances, they're they're guaranteed to get a goal. <laughs> like I'm not trying to mush San Jose here, but I think San Jose, they more than definitely capable of getting a goal against Vancouver here. A key for Vancouver, I think, also is just run, like stay active. Like they seem to get comfortable. If they take, once they get the early lead, they 
they seem to take their foot off the pedal, which is recipe for disaster. And they just got to keep going, pushing forward, even if they get that first goal, like keep make it two nothing, three nothing, or whatever. Because as once they seem to play, get that early goal, it's like they seem to be kind of content and you know just try to defend that after. Which when you play not to lose, it's kind of a recipe for disaster. So, and especially against a team like San Jose, even though they can't really score on the road, they still have that pedigree because they are a high scoring team. So they will make you pay if you if you don't you know make a mistake or you don't play, you take your foot off the pedal because San Jose is going to go for it too. And I'm sure both these teams know looking at the table, this is how huge this game and nobody wants to draw points. Right. So I think we might see maybe a bit of a conservative opening half, like 30 minutes in the game of feeling out process. I have a feeling it could start slow. And then once we get more into the game, we could maybe see Vancouver taking more, I would say risks than anything. And then we'll see how they respond. But yeah, I think Vancouver, like I said, they can't, they can't play to lose. Once they play to lose, they're going to lose the game. Just like we saw against Tigris. I think they got comfortable after one, nothing and thought, try to take it home. And we saw how how it resulted. So I'll be a good game for sure though. Uh, Yeah. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to take one step further on Angelo's point. Um, There was a game that I watched for Vancouver and it was against the LA Galaxy. I believe it was the July 15th game because I have so many, they had so many goals then. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The game finished 4-2. Vancouver scored a lot of goals early, but I think it was towards the last 30 minutes of that game, LA Galaxy kept coming back despite the lack of um, offense that they had with, I think, Chicharito was out um, Mm -hmm. before then. Don't quote me on that, but um, yeah, LA Galaxy started coming back and they they finished 4-2. Um, but you know, like you said, scoring early, um, with the Vancouver team, it's, it's, it might not benefit at the, the end of the game. Um, mm-hmm. especially for San Jose, considering our, our nickname is good, you know, our method is Goonies never say die. So, um, <laughs> you know, it is something to look out for, for earthquakes fans and Vancouver's fans alike, you know, this, this, this will be a, a tough matchup no matter which way it goes. If Vancouver's up three, nothing at half. Uh, you know, stay glued to your seats because, you know, things could change at the end of the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Devin, I was curious. Definitely. uh, What are your, like, what do you think that we have to do to to beat them again on the road? I think we just have to keep taking shots on target. Uh, Move the ball around more in the offense. Try to keep possession, hold possession. Um, Give the ball to Grezzo, Yule. Let them, you know, switch out each side of the field. Um... I think if there's a chance to swing it to the left, let Kate Cowell run on those uh, on those counter attacks if possible, um, or you know, in, uh, load the box up with a bunch of players when SB's on the ball and see if we can get a header on it. Um, even a set piece, like Angela was talking about, if we can get a set piece um, somewhere around the box, I think we can have Rodriguez or one of those taller defensemen put a header on it. Um, one of my one of my biggest criticisms for the earthquakes is you have to put a shot on target no more of those flying 35 balls in the air (laughs) flying it into the the airport or whatever (laughs) that that seattle announcer said to us um i think we need to put more shots on target and i'm looking at the stats right now the last game versus uh vancouver on march 4th we had 20 shots compared to uh, vancouver seven and six of those were on target compared to vancouver's two uh, we also had 60% possession versus 40%, um, and 609 passes versus 406. So I think Lucci's design play allows the possession build up, um, and I think we need to keep control of that, especially in a away game, considering our form is is almost abysmal. We've only had one win away. So if we keep possession away, I think we can dictate the game and you know force at least a draw. If possible, yeah. Uh, so Devin, uh, real quick, I want to hear your thoughts on Hoppy, but I also want to hear how you think that he might play into this game. Being uh, as Angelo gave us uh, the secret weapon, might be set pieces in this match. <laughs> well, I, I haven't read, I haven't watched too much of Hoppy's games, but I know that he is a U.S. men's national team former prospect or current prospect. Um, he's come in here with a lot of European experience and. And he seems like a, a a good player when put when put in the box. Um, 
his connections with Espinoza might be critical for for his development and and bringing himself back into form to to head back to Europe. I think I think as long as he just hits those one timer shots that he used to take back, um, uh, I forgot it was like the Scottish League or Schalke. something. Um, yeah, Schalke as, as well. If he if he makes more of those one time efforts, I think we can have he he'd give us a good shot of uh, breaking the deadlocks. I definitely agree. Um, so I think someone who's going to make it very hard for us to score goals is uh, Yohei Takeoka. Uh, I remember when he came in, a lot of people had you know some doubt on on you know getting players from the J League. Uh, I don't think anyone really considered them like a, a place to go for talent, but I think. We saw in the in the first match against them, he was really hard to beat. Uh, so, uh, Angelo, I'm curious, like, what were your initial uh, thoughts on Takeoka when you signed him, and how has he met your expectations? Yeah, first you're always kind of leery with transfers, right? Like, there's always the buzz, and then you see people posting the video comps, and then they make the player look good, right? But they never show the bad parts, right? So... Always a little skeptical, especially kind of, I cheer for teams in Europe, you know, they're always making transfers, spend money, and then, like, it never works out. So, like, it tra- my hope transfer over is to Vancouver, too. So they always seem to kind of miss the mark on transfers. They seem to be better at developing players than bringing in players. But that said, can't complain. You know, what was it, a couple years ago when we lost Maxime Crepu to LAFC? That was a big blow to us. And I think that's what kind of made a difference last year for Vancouver to miss the playoffs was their goaltending. I'm not pinning the goaltending on Vancouver missing the playoffs last year, but, you know, just one or two extra saves or whatever is the difference. And that's what Takagawa is giving us right now. I'm impressed with him. I can't complain. And hopefully, you know, he just keeps it up. He's going to be relied upon heavily. And I just looked it up the last game San Jose and Vancouver played at home in BC Place. There was 16 versus 15 shots on net. So, and just like on the game and back in March 4th, I think there's going to be lots of shots on net. So he's going to have to be on his A game for Takaoka and to keep the Whitecaps in this game. If he's not, then we're, we could see potentially a goal fest. So he's going to have to be sharp. And like you said, Caden Cowell, he's he's dynamite. He's dangerous. And if he's not marked, Takaoka at first 1v1 versus him, I, I'm giving K. Cowell the advantage. So, so yeah, he's going to have to perform good and hopefully he stays healthy and gives us a fighting chance. Oh, definitely. Uh, and I, so I always realize this when, when we talk to people like outsiders, non Quakes fans uh, on Kate Cowell, because mm-hmm. for us, we're like, God dang it, Cade again. Like, he just, that's just our <laughs> thoughts on Kate Cowell at all times. But then, like, in, like, five-second period, he'll run past the whole team and look like Cristiano Ronaldo in his prime. And we're like, okay, <laughs> never mind. We can't actually say anything. But then he'll, you know, just run off the pitch randomly. Um, and so he's a very frustrating player. But uh, so it's, it's, it's uh, interesting to see the perspectives that outsiders have on, on uh, Kate Powell. But, Devin, um, go ahead. Yeah, there's a- I was gonna say there's there's a lot of polarization on Cade Cowell. I'm in an MLS group chat on on formerly Twitter now X, and there's a, there's a bunch of people that love him or hate him. There's no in between. Yeah. Um... <laughs> no, I think he's quality. It's just like you said, like it's the consistency. That's why he's in the MLS. Like, let's be real. That's why these guys are there because it's a consistency. But I think him in Europe, he plays with better. Play- I'm like, this is not a shot against Earth team but he plays with a little bit more quality in Europe I think you're going to see a greater Cade Caldwell too right potentially like I think his ceiling is going to even go up and up more so yeah uh, Devin, Devin was making a, that I point do. in the in the Tantic Discord shout out to the Discord definitely join if you aren't already in there uh, uh, but uh, he could definitely improve I don't think we want a loan deal for him which was uh, proposed which is why there's kind of issues on that transfer going through because they they wanted to make it a loan with a uh, a buy option at the end mm-hmm. and we were like, what if they realize <laughs> all the issues that he has? It's like a it's like trying to sell your car or something. I don't know, but um, 
Um, <laughs> so we, we just want to straight up uh, the option because that'll incentivize them to put more effort into developing him and bringing out what he has uh, as opposed to a loan where it's like, oh, he missed his first touch. We're kind of going to forget about him and not pay his uh, buy option and just let him go back at the end of the year, which is, you know, our worst fear because being without him and then not getting anything for him, like that's not a great deal for us. Uh, mm-hmm. I agree. And this 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 is a, a great transition to a, a next topic. Um, I, I would like to ask you, Angelo, uh, this was a question from our Discord. How many Whitecaps fans have become dedicated Bayern Munich fans because of Alfonso Davies? <laughs> well, you're you're looking at one right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Well, like in Europe, my main team is Roma, same as Ivan for Syria. So I'm used to losing. It's been a painful 20 years. So call me a bandwagon or I don't care. So yeah, I definitely did start cheering for Bayern Munich and watching watching a lot more uh, Bundesliga soccer since he joined been geez how long has it been now 2019 so like last four years or so so yeah no i i i shouldn't can say myself i'm a bayer munich fan like i don't get emotionally attached like when they lost the super cup there on the weekend they're like i wasn't like torn to pieces or whatever but like i'm a supporter of bayer munich i you know i want the best for alfonso davies and yeah, like I think him going to Bayern Munich has made me almost a bigger Bundesliga fan than, say, Bayern Munich fan. But I guess Bayern Munich, they're kind of the team I kind of root for just because Davies on there and, until some new maybe Canadian makes its way to Bundesliga because this is kind of new for my generation. <laughs> we haven't had players from the national team go over to Europe and play on the big time stage. So it's really neat to witness and see. So that's why I have an attachment to Bayern Munich for the time being. And then wherever Davies goes, if he rumors are true, like if he goes to Real Madrid or something like that, I guess I'll jump on the bandwagon there. Abram, I got a question for you. Do you think Alfonso Davies is the best product MLS just, has given out to Europe? I was just about Can to you bring think that of up, anyone actually, better? Um, no. <laughs> uh, so there's a case to be made for Clint Dempsey. At this point, um, I think he came from New England Revolution from the 2004 draft. I don't know. That's a long time ago. But, um, uh, you know, he had a very illustrious uh, career in Europe, very steady career, I would say. Uh, you know, scored a bunch of goals, uh, played very consistently for his team. Whereas Alfonso Davies is very young still and obviously is touted as one of the best left backs in the world, which Dempsey was never touted as the best anything in the world. Um, so there, there is that difference, but Davies, like, has struggled with injuries, uh, you know, so if there's, like, if he goes up and or stays at this level consistently, for sure. But if something happens to him where he loses a lot of pace or whatever, which is possible, you know, knock on wood, wouldn't want that to happen to him because I love watching Davies play. But uh, it's too early to say, unfortunately, but I think that he's on the, he's on the trajectory mm-hmm. to for sure be that player be the best MLS, uh, you know, export ever. Absolutely. Angela, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. Like, it's, I would say it's too early. I would agree. I think Clint Dempsey would have been my pick too. Like, I, like, it was so cool to see him, you know, like, kind of rip it up in the English Premier League when he went, like, like, a, like to me, MLS, it's more to me to see the development of these players develop here like in North America and then go overseas and play like like I find that awesome like it gives me goosebumps just to see like you know it all happened like on this soil here and then they were playing in the biggest leagues in the world with all the eyeballs on them but yeah like as right now I can't say Alfonso Davies just because he hasn't hit his peak yet and his stock could really go down who knows things happen to players whatever like this is think outside that box, but you you start dating models, this and that. Like you start living like the high life, and you know what? Maybe sometimes money gets to your head and all that, and you lose the passion for the game after. So I would have to say, Clint Dempsey, as of now, is probably the best MLS export to me. True, yeah. Alfonso Davies is still very young and has a long way to go in his career. No, definitely. So uh, it looks like he will be, but you know, can't fully say that right now. 
Uh, Devin, do you have any more questions mm -hmm. from my Discord or not? Um, I'm currently looking right now. I don't think we have any other Discord related okay, questions. Okay, well, if that's the case, uh, if Angelo, you, if you don't have anything more to add, I think that might uh, conclude uh, today's episode of Chronic Take. Um, yeah, I just want to say, um, do you guys have final predictions? I, I for me, I think this game is leaning a draw. I honestly, I don't. I think two teams that haven't played in a while, they might be a little bit rusty. I think I said. I don't know. I see a 2-2 draw. That's my prediction. I agree. I think there's going to be a high-scoring game. I think... Whoa, voice crack. I think uh, Vancouver might slip a victory out. I'm going to... A genuine prediction will be a 3-2 win for Vancouver, given the San Jose Earthquakes' home disadvantage, and it is against the turf field, which we have absolutely, like, no luck on turf fields <laughs> besides Seattle. Seattle's the, like, the only team that we can win on a turf field. So um, that's, what I, that's what my prediction is. I'm hoping for at least a draw, of course. And I'm hoping for a 4-2 win for San Jose. But, you know, that's that's Watch my that bias. Why opinion. not go 7-0? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Touchdown, yeah. Uh, that's, that's a little that's a little bit of uh, PTSD for San Jose Earthquakes fans back in the, the last time we made playoffs. Um, so what are, what are your predictions, Avril? Um, so I unfortunately agree with Angelo. I, I don't want to tie 2-2. I want to do well. I want to... Uh, change our like um uh the perception that we are a terrible away team but i don't think we will because we are a terrible away team um so i'm thinking a 2-2 draw is a, a very realistic uh score i'm hoping maybe we can keep them to only one goal uh so a 2-1 win would be another realistic uh result uh in our favor um that's what i'm hoping for but uh, i think it's gonna be 2-2 two -two. Well, just to spin some positivity, like for San Jose, you can look and say they only have one road win, but they've gotten points out of like, what was it? They have four draws on the road. So five out of 11 road games, half of their road games, they've been able to get a result, right? So it's not like they lose every road game. They do get points, right? So there is that kind of, I would say, positivity for San Jose. If I was an Earthquakes fan, like, there's a puncher's chance for sure. I appreciate that positivity because it sometimes it doesn't exist in in Quake community. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a rare find. Yeah, um, I, I do have a question though for you, Angelo. Um, uh, speaking of the connection between the Earthquakes to Vancouver, um, give us your thoughts on on Florian Youngworth. I remember he retired either earlier this year or last season, um, and he's become a coach for I think the second team for Vancouver. Um, uh, yeah, it's that, I haven't really, I'll be honest with you, I haven't followed the, the Vancouver Whitecaps, like, second team, but I think that's a good move for them. You got somebody experienced on the bench and everything, so that's all I can add to that. Like, I, I if I say any more, I'll make myself a fucking <laughs> idiot here. Like, I, I, I haven't really followed that move, to be honest with you. Oh, Angelo. Okay, I will say that uh, as someone who's watched a lot of Quake 2 games this year, I do not like facing White Cat. You guys have a lot of very young and insanely fast players on your Quake 2 team that might be mm -hmm. one to look out for. And uh, it, it was really a dreadful to just experience us getting burned every time you guys got the ball. Um, but yeah, um, if, that's, if that's all the questions we have, then uh, I would like to thank you very much for uh, coming on. I know we have some scheduling issues, but I really appreciate you being flexible and patient with us. Um, uh, Devin, you as well. I'm glad you're here. Um, but uh, this has been uh, the 93rd episode of Tectonic Take. Uh, I appreciate you guys all for coming. Uh, Angelo, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Pazapix. Um... I'm usually doing sports betting for MLS. You can find, I like to bet on soccer, any league in the world. So if you like some sometimes winning picks, just give me a follow. And yeah, I just want to say thanks for having me on the podcast here. It was really fun to talk, Wake Caps and Earthquakes. And hopefully we, we get an awesome match on Sunday, return to MLS here. Angelo's uh, Twitter will be in the description down below. Yep. Uh, Devin, uh, can you also mm -hmm. provide uh, for us any of your uh links or apps or any of those things um i guess you can find me on twitter devbo underscore 88 
that's about all I use for social media nowadays. Um, <laughs> I, I've moved off Instagram and, and other social media networks. So find us all on Twitter. Yeah, and those will all be in the description. But uh, thank you guys very much for watching, and we will catch you guys next time. Peace. Thank you.